Blessed heart now broke with grief, thrice denied and sold by greed. Of what worth are those who cheat and lie? Yet for them you say you'll go and die. Yours is the power, the glory too. You could make kings bow to you. You could be the king if you just try. What use is it if you go and die? Men they mock you heap with scorn. King of kings, so lowly born. No one will believe you if you cry that for them you're going to go and die. Now I see you there upon the cross. Save yourself ere the battle's lost. You say you'll kill death and set us free. Are you God to say that you'll save me? Looks like death will win the victory. Have you believed, Thomas, because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Please stand as you are able for our opening hymn, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from the book of Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possession, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will say the psalm responsively. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard. Upon the beard of Aaron and runs down upon the color of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore, creator of the universe, from whom all things come, to whom all things return. Give your people such unity of heart and mind that all the world may grow in the life of your eternal kingdom. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father, and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light in him, there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice of our sins, and not only for our, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called a twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, 
I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, everyone. Every year on the Sunday after Resurrection Sunday, we have the story of Jesus' first encounter with all of the disciples after his resurrection. And so, each year, we hear the story of Jesus meeting his disciples and what has now come to be known as unfortunately the Doubting Thomas story. Imagine having one of your errors or mishaps form how people remember you for generations. On a conceptual level, I recognize the importance of seeing the contrast between the disciples who met Jesus and believed and the importance of believing without seeing. Yet to distill our gospel reading such that we may criticize the one disciple who wanted a direct sign when in fact the other disciples wanted the exact same thing, seems quite incomplete in a way. It is not to say that faith isn't important. It absolutely is. And we too are called to believe without seeing. Yet it is important to show grace and understanding when we are unpacking our scriptures and looking at the journey of the disciples after the resurrection. In the same way, we too would be filled with shock and so many other emotions, so too can we empathize with the many emotions that would have been felt after the events of the crucifixion and resurrection, given all of the upheaval that would have taken place. Our gospel account for today begins just after the events of the resurrection. We recall that the disciples we're still in a state of disbelief, fear, and surprise about the empty tomb. For them, the events had just happened. For us, we are recounting this story with a large gap of time between the events itself and where we are today in time. Now, we are told that some of the disciples, while they were locked away, hidden in the upper room, saw Jesus directly as he appeared to them. And his appearance ultimately confirmed to the disciples the reality of the resurrection and the empty tomb that Mary Magdalene and the other women witnessed. And here in that upper room, at that first moment of appearing to the disciples, the risen Jesus is made known to them so clearly. Of course, we are told that Thomas was not present in that upper room during that first encounter that the other disciples had with the risen Jesus. We do not know where Thomas was, and we will likely never know why he was not present with the group for that initial interaction with the risen Jesus. Yet wherever he was, he made his way back to these other disciples. 
And when he is later told about the encounter, he says very clearly that unless he sees Jesus for himself, he will not believe. What is noteworthy is the way in which Thomas makes this proclamation. When Thomas expresses his doubt, he does so in the way that the other disciples would have been known to express their doubts. The other disciples too did not initially believe Mary Magdalene or the other women's account of the resurrection, be it shock, be it fear, be it anything else. And even here, we know in other places in our scripture that some believed initially, but others continue to have some doubts and some questions. Yet Thomas, even though he made his bold proclamations about wanting to see Jesus for himself, he did not leave or abandon his group. Thomas stays with the group of disciples, which is important for us to ponder. This is because even though Thomas expressed his desire to have the same experience as the other disciples, he remained and continued to serve with them. Now, our texts do not say whether Thomas became angry or upset that he did not have the same encounter. And we can see that despite that, it did not change his, his perception of his ministry. He still trusted in God and in what he knew about Jesus to complete the tasks that had been set before him. Now, when we get to the encounter that Jesus has with Thomas specifically, where Jesus interacts with him through words and through inviting him to touch his wounds, what is interesting is that as soon as Thomas sees Jesus appear to him and call out to him, he acknowledges Jesus to be Lord. This shift that has taken place is one where it is no doubt that Thomas has about who he knows Jesus is. Even though he wanted to see Jesus and he got the opportunity to do so, he still had faith. And even though Thomas had questions, it did not mean that his face was empty or void. Yet when Thomas sees Jesus and proclaims his belief yet again, this is done as an acknowledgement of who Jesus is. Thomas is the first to proclaim Jesus as his Lord and his God. Thomas here acknowledges openly and vocally the fully divine and fully human nature of Jesus, showing us that the fullness of Jesus is there for us all to see and that we can hope and trust in Jesus just the same. Now the rebuke that Jesus makes is not solely for Thomas, but for all of the disciples and of course for us. Jesus wants them and us to grow deeper in faith and to rely less on physical signs as they continue in mission and ministry. And this is the same for us. Trusting in God's goodness empowers us to live out our faith as we trust in God's promises. When we have faith, that good prevails and faith in God's love, we continue to trust that we too can live out our Easter call as a res resurrection people caring for our world. The best part of our reading is the hope that is found despite everything else happening all around the disciples. It is the truth that Jesus is present for us when we least expect it. And of course, during those times, when we are very much in need of God's continued help and guidance. To me, this is the continued good news of our God, the God who will be there for us during what seems like the darkest of situations, during those times we are finding our way back to God's leading, and those times when we are reassured that we do indeed have a friend in Jesus. Likewise, we are called to be present to reassure one another during times of change and difficulty. As we can see in our scripture, the disciples were in community when they first encountered Jesus. And when Thomas meets Jesus, he is in community as well. I imagine that during that time, this time of great uncertainty, the disciples hopefully would have been ministering or at the very least comforting each other. And this is no small task to show up and support one another. For us, I think that we too can be reminded 
that we play a vital role in encouraging each other as we continue on our own journeys. As we go forward living out our Easter faith, may we go forward knowing that God goes with us. God meets us where we are and is made known to us in various ways. As we consider how we live out our faith, may we consider that the small actions we take help us to grow in our faith. Faith is the promise of God's truth and goodness, even when we cannot always see it. Faith is the light in the darkness and the promise that God is with us as we go forth. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Together in God's presence, let us pray to our Lord and respond, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. In the cycles of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Damaturu in the Church of Nigeria, for the Provincial Synod of the Ecclesiastical Province of Ontario, and for the season of spiritual renewal. For the social justice and advocacy work, of St. Barnabas Chester, St. Bartholomew, and St. Bede. In Oshawa Deanery, for St. Matthew's Oshawa. We thank you and pray for Shelley, our minister, Richard, our honorary assistant, and our bishops, Primate Linda, National Indigenous Chris, Metropolitan Anne, Diocesan Andrew, and suffragans Kevin and Rosilla. For the ministry of this parish, especially our Sunday school and their teachers. We ask for your blessing, Lord, on all members of our parish family, and in the week ahead, particularly the families of Nancy, Chris, and Margaret. For all, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Canada's First Nations and the Truth and Reconciliation Process. For the people of Sudan and Ukraine. For peace in the Middle East and wherever there is conflict. Locally, for the homeless, for the hungry, and those struggling with loneliness or depression. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your blessing on those in need particularly Autumn, Mac, Sandy, Erna, Vicky, Beulah, Carol, Rosie, Rick, Myrna, Aiden, Claire, Bill, Shorna, Claudine, Marcia, and Gary. 
as well as those we carry in our hearts. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a blessing on those celebrating birthdays, including Selena and Selwyn, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have died recently, including the Reverend Bill Kibblewhite, Ruth Walker, and Sister Barbara Grozel, and ask for your comfort for their families and friends who are grieving, that the departed may enjoy eternal peace, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All these are prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites us to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace, everybody. Blessings.
Let us pray. God of grace, you have freed us from our sins and made us a kingdom in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Accept all we offer you this day and strengthen us in the new life you have given us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who placed their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. may be seated. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who in the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And those wishing to do so may make their spiritual communion by joining in this prayer with me now. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Father, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other. Through Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you and the ones you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Good morning, everyone. Okay, first thing is uh, following the service today and following coffee hour, our stewardship committee is putting on the first of three stewardship presentations this morning. Um, you probably received an invitation. We're doing three presentations, one today, one Tuesday night, one Thursday night. We've split the congregation into three more manageable groups. So your invitation may have specified one date, but you're welcome to come to any of that that best suit you. So the first one is after church today, and then uh, hopefully we'll see you at that one or one of the other ones this week. Um, okay, Shelly is going to be on her winter break, a well-deserved and well-earned winter break from April 11th to the 18th, so she will not be here. Uh, Father Richard, even though he is not with us, will be available for pastoral emergencies. If you have anything, please contact the office either by phone or by email. It is being monitored daily, and we will make sure that that gets to him and he gets to you. <clears throat> and just a friendly reminder in general that Shelley's regular day off, as much as a priest gets one, is on Fridays. So uh, if, you, if you have an urgent need, by all means, contact uh, the office or her. Um, but if it's a less urgent thing, it may take till the following day to get re replied to. Uh, Sharon, our, office, our parish administrator, will be away from April 22nd to 26th. So uh, the, if you need something in the bulletin, that needs to be into the office by April the 16th. And also on the bulletin announcements, we've moved up the date of the e-blast or the weekly email. It will be going out on Thursdays now. So if you want something in that week's email, it needs to be to the office by Tuesday of that week so that she's got time to get it uh, put in the, uh, in the bulletin. Couple save the dates, Tuesday, April 30th at 7 p.m. McKechnie Funeral Home is going to be here to, uh, to explain funeral preparation and planning. So it's not something we like to think about very much, but um, they will be here for anyone who's uh, interested in learning more about that. Uh, it's a, uh, there'll be refreshments served and it'll be an interesting evening with uh, lots of information about that. And on Sunday, May the 26th, so little ways off, but please mark it on your calendar. We're going to be holding a parish workshop to uh, discuss what we love about St. Martin's. So as a congregation, we're gonna get together. Uh, there will be a, a facilitator from the diocese here to, to work with us. Everyone is welcome, we hope to see everyone. Uh, a light lunch will be served and uh, we'll talk about what we love about being here. And uh, one more uh, note from the office. Uh, an email went out to all people who participate in worship service. So readers, greeters, servers, chalice bearers, all of those things. Uh, putting the schedule together so that all these pieces fit together is a very big task because we have a great many volunteers. So Sharon's trying something new. Uh, rather than ask people to just send in dates manually, there's a link to a doodle poll. So that's kind of a new thing, but you'll go on there and you'll mark what days you're available and what days you're not, and then that helps prepare a master list of when we can plug people into different things. So. Um, please look for that email, uh, put your dates in. If you have any problems, contact Sharon in the office and she'll work through that with you. And I think, I think I've got everything. So thank you. Um, please stand for our closing hymn.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Please. 